everybody, this is Neil Feiler and I'm here with the Evolutionary Astrology Message. This time, for the skies of mid-July 2023 until the end of the month. In Judaism, we are now at a time that is called between the straits. As if we're walking a very narrow path between two great straits that are, um, you know, threatening to come upon us. It is a time that usually it is advised not to go swimming in the sea, especially behind the, you know, in the deep, or not to bungee jump or, um, <laughs> or raft in the Himalayas, not to do anything too dangerous at this time as this is a narrow path we're walking. And indeed, astrologically, the skies can reflect that with two very important on the one hand and powerful oppositions that are amidst the, the, the celestial uh, realms right now. We are in a new moon in Cancer opposing Pluto Hades, the god of volcanoes and the underworld and all this emotional lava that makes us want and the things we want and act get them before it is even in our conscious realms so this is one opposition and its signature carries through the next lunar cycle of 29 and a half days in that sense the new moon in cancer when we talk about the sign of cancer it connects us to our roots and heritage to our motherland and mother and family and clan to everything we grew up upon to our inner sanctuary this fortress that is never impacted by the waves hitting its walls continuously we are talking about our capacity not only to be in touch with our inner child that needs compassion and love and strengthening but to be that person that mothering person to others as well to give that love and compassion and strength and security to others in our lives this opposes Pluto Hades okay so plainly speaking in English this is a cycle with a lot of emotional turbulence with dramatic emotion both ways it could the totality and intensity could come in good ways and it can come in harder ways as well and what I'm asking of you is step back a step and look at it observe the emotional waves and currents but don't be governed by them at this time because this is a very therapeutic time this moon stands in a t-square i mean i'm sorry chiron the wounded healer in aries stands in a t-square to this pluto and new moon so there could be many things throughout this lunar cycle that trigger traumas that were there before for us or people in our environment and these are keys for change for improvement for healing if we look at these earlier traumas today with all the experience the tools the wisdom that we now have we have a much greater chance of understanding what happened to that younger person when this actually occurred and what behavioral patterns developed within that person within us or within people around us because of that trauma that maybe they're trying or we're still trying to change because we don't want to be governed by the traumas that we've had and indeed we can understand better also what happened with the other person in the scenario and why they acted the way they did certainly better than we could when we were younger and this could provide again a key for healing and letting go of these shackles that bind our legs you know 
and, and, and make us limp forward instead of walk freely. So a very turbulent emotional time that can go both ways, that can be endearing and can be uh, challenging as well. And indeed, this is a time to be sensitive and compassionate and make sure we're not hurting or getting hurt again. The opposition between Pluto and the Sun remains with us. Deeply transformative times in which things are uncovered both in the personal plane and the general public plane. Corruption is brought into the light. And this new understanding and this new revelation actually creates the turmoil, the emotional storm that comes after it. And the change, the transformation. Indeed, we could see our own shadows and do some shadow work this time. Or see the shadows around us and change them. Work for change. And this is not something easily done when in the sky there's another opposition between the constrictor Saturn, the great judge, and the young warrior, the energetic young doer called Mars in Virgo, and that Saturn in Pisces. So we get the feeling that we need to act and we need to do it now, if not yesterday. We don't have any time to wait. We cannot wait. Things need to change and there's stress about it. Yet things are stuck. Things are eroding. The system is, you know, rusty in a sense. It's full of rust. It's crumbling. <laughs> and this can give us a sense of frustration. Nevertheless, this is only proof to us that things need to change on a deep level. The, the pillars of the earth need a mending. That the things that our society are based upon need a remedy. That the work needs to be deeper and more thorough that it needs to work on a long-term basis, on a strategic basis, and not on a daily manner of quenching fires and going to the immediate. Furthermore, this new moon is joining Neptune, the ruler of the sea and Pisces, So this can give this lunar cycle a creative streak. We can speak and converse with the muses at this time. We can create, we can tune in to nature, to spirit, to goddess and God, inward. We could... Um, I'm sorry, my computer just shut off. <laughs> Talking about Neptune. So we could be very creative and we could be very fruitful at this time. And that's a great thing, you know. If we actually take this time to create, you know, and to dance through this time, to paint through this time, to write or to rhyme or to sing through this time, and actually let that song or painting or creative endeavor stay with us later and actually be a symbol of that conversation we had with the heavens. Furthermore, we can feel more than usually the angels, the guides, and goddess, God, helping us understand that even though things seem lost, and erroneous, everything is exactly in place. And we are all on the road. Indeed, we can never forsake that road. We are always on it. I want to talk a bit about the end of the month, 27th to 31st of July, 
we are already in the midst of the full moon energy so this is a if we are talking creatively this could be a very fruitful time and this is a good time even though venus is in retrograde already we're going to talk about the retrograde in a second and uh, it conjuncts mercury so it's a good time to maybe finalize things make decisions make moves sign things you just have to look at the small print that concern venusian endeavors like how do i create uh, pleasure in my life and satisfaction how do i bring value into my life what is my self value based upon what kind of material value can i draw whether it's food or money or assets or lands and how do i draw more value through my relationships indeed as venus starts its retrograde it's going through a restart and into a new cycle and this is a good time to actually think mercury about these things and make decisions and i want you to know that since we are in a retrograde cycle these 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 can change you know these decisions or these moves can change but making them is important because it's like connecting lines on a dot so many times the answer can move from the one side to the other but it's the the way and the revelation it presents is the important thing about it and indeed this can be a time of improvement or disprovement in our relationships how we bring in money and our self value relationship with our bodies and if you are a leo or this venus retrograde in leo is impacting your chart powerfully then many times your surroundings can change and it moves from the 22nd of july until september 3rd in within the retrograde movement and from the 12th degree a bit a bit you know that's 12 something until the almost the 29th degree of leo so if you are leos and you were born in the second week and uh, and uh, after of the sign you would be impacted because your son would be uh, uh, crossed by uh, this venus a couple of times nevertheless um this isn't a time to be passive this isn't a time to be ideal this is a time to stand up to the challenges that have stopped you before and you know put your flag on them once you're on top and go down the other way and see them you know uh, getting smaller in the distance behind you because this same mars that we were talking about that is in opposition with saturn right now is going to get a trine from jupiter by the 31st it's going to be at its height so we're going to have a lot of energy and a lot of personal power to actually transcend things that have stopped us before and this is not only in a um on a personal plane but also on a national and public plane and what we need to watch for is moderation and to keep our heads together and not to become too enthusiastic about things and uh, overshoot the target and think that we can handle everything you know so that's about what i wanted to talk to you about there's a 20 percent discount about re uh, for readings with me uh, over zoom f f until the end of the month so utilize them and there's a new course opening in zoom for beginners would love to hear from you all the details i had a slide at the end may we all live long and prosper this is Nia Filer signing out take care and good luck and good night